Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. This is a bonus um, follow up from the Worldwide Forgiveness Summit. And today I have the um, great pleasure to speak with Dr. Michael Rice who um, was one of Colin's teachers and mentors back in the early days and when he discovered the radical forgive his radical forgiveness process that he created based on you know what he was learning from Dr. Rice's teachings and some other um, individuals as well so welcome welcome Dr. Rice but we're gonna I'm gonna call you Michael because that's what I've been calling Michael, you <laughs> yes call, call me anything but late for dinner <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for, um, ha you know, spending some time with us and, and sharing. Delighted. With us. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm going to just read a, a brief part of your bio um, so that our listeners um, just know who you are and what you do. And then we're going to get right into it. So Dr. Michael Rice. Go for it. Yes, Dr. My, Dr. Michael Rice is the founder and director of Heartland, a self-healing center in the Ozark Mountains. He is a world-renowned lecturer and teacher on health and healing with doctorates in naturopathic medicine and in holistic physiology. Philosophy. Philosophy. <laughs> the focus of his studies has combined body-mind principles, physics, and ancient Aramaic studies into a unique body of pioneering work in the field of self-healing, healing through relationships, anger, and grief resolution, world peace, and the inner process of forgiveness. So um, there is a whole page on that that um, if anyone's interested in, please um, visit Michael at whyagain.org, W-H-Y-A-G-A-I-N.org, and you can learn all about him and the Heartland and um, all the work that he's doing in the world, which is, I'm so impressed. And uh, so I'm going to hand it over to you, Michael, to share with us, uh, you know, the early days of radical forgiveness before it even came into inception. Well, my my work is, uh, my original work is in the field of electronics with a side study in physics. And because of um, having almost been dead three or four times the first year of my life and lived on inhalator and peers, pills for the next 25 and realizing that that uh, was keeping me alive, but it wasn't healing me. It was actually killing me. It sent me on a search. And uh, one of the uh, things that I came across, aside from moving into the field of naturopathic medicine to understand more about physiology and how this energy system called the body mind unit works, I uh, came into contact with the Aramaic language. And the Aramaic language is the parent language to at least six of the world's major religions not because it's a religious language, but because it is a physics language. It is a language of physiology. It's a language of psychology. It's a language of genetics. And there's an understanding there about how this energy system, again, called a body-mind unit, worked. And right. when it was off base, how it could be corrected. Right. And the core tool that, for me, became really clear and that I dedicated my life to Oh, better than 40 years ago, I've been do, developing this work for almost 50 years. And about 40 years ago was when I came across the Aramaic and the Aramaic understanding and definition of forgiveness, which is quite different from what we're told by the Greeks. In the Greek language, we're told that, you know, somebody out there is the problem in our lives. It's their fault that I'm experiencing this. And then if I would just forgive them, if I just let them off the hook, then everything would be okay in my physiology. And of course, if I let you and everybody in the world off the hook for what's happening inside of me, I've done nothing to address what's happening inside of me. And so to turn the understanding of forgiveness around became an interesting journey because I, like everybody else on the planet, had been told forgiveness was about letting others off the hook, about mm -hmm. forgiving them. And my offering is that if you're still talking about forgiving them or forgiving yourself, then you're talking about the Greek act of pardoning, and that has nothing to do with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so Colin ended up coming to a, I believe it was a week of workshops I did in Gainesville, uh, Georgia, back, hmm, I'm not even sure how many years ago this is now. I think he mentions in, in, his, in the uh, acknowledgement on his website um, just when that was, and uh, he 
tapped into the forgiveness process and took the, you know, I had developed a worksheet over the previous 20 years or so and picked that up and uh, started to work with it and found it beneficial uh, and started to develop the idea of radical forgiveness and wrote his book. And, uh, you know, if, uh, several couple months ago when we heard, I, I did not know that uh, he was even uh, having physical challenges, but I heard that he had passed and we actually took a moment of silence and had everybody in our um, Mind Shifters radio community. We do a radio show five days a week, two hours mm -hmm. a day. Uh, and uh, so we had everybody in the community, which is pretty much global, um, holding the space for Colin as he stepped into the next level of his work on the planet and his journey. Yes. And uh, so we, you know, think of him often and send love and, and mm -hmm. hold him in the space for whatever his life is now about, which I'm sure is still about forgiveness. And uh, yeah. so, so when he uh, came to that workshop, he tapped into the forgiveness process. And, you know, at that point we had, um, you know, we're putting forward a vision that I had created, oh, 25 years earlier of, we're going to take this to every mind, heart and being on the planet. And, you know, our goal is to make the internal process of forgiveness available to every mind, heart, and being on the planet. And the the idea of forgiveness in Aramaic is not about me letting you off the hook for what's happening inside of me, but rather it's about me going inside of the dissociated parts of my own mind, removing any content based in pain, and that removal is called forgiveness. Yes, yes. And so that's what my journey has been for the last... 40 or so years and uh, 10 years or so before that, before I came in touch with the Aramaic, I was working toward that, but didn't have the understanding until I came in touch with the, uh, the first century teachings of the man they call Jesus. His name actually wasn't Jesus, it was Yeshua, and uh, came to understand the first century meaning of his words. Uh, wow. We publish a book called Enlightenment, which is a, uh, a book based in the Aramaic, and uh, we look at, and we had a team of 25 of the world's top aramicists working on uh, developing an understanding of the first century meanings of those words. And out of the recognition that forgiveness was an internal process, we developed the understanding that uh, what, what forgiveness does is it collapses perception based in hostility and fear. and when those perceptions, which are generated by the mind, collapse in on themselves. They give us access to the hidden or the dissociated parts of the mind. And when I bring those hidden or dissociated parts of the mind forward in the presence of love, they dissolve and yes. I'm free of them. That's for, that's forgiveness. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I, I just, um, I'm just thinking as I'm hearing you talk about, you know, how forgiveness really just goes so 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 far back and it, it's true in in many things that i think we're starting to see in the world that the ancient um teachings are are are, are the truth and and they were hidden or they were forgotten or lost and and now you know we're starting to see how we did know this so long ago and and i and love that is probably the appropriate word yes <laughs> Yeah. Hit it, yeah, absolutely. So, but now yeah, so it's all coming Vladimir to Lenin. light. Sorry. Excuse me, I was going to say, if you listen to Vladimir Lenin, mm -hmm. probably responsible for more deaths on planet Earth mm -hmm. than anybody mm -hmm. in history, mm -hmm. he says, if you want to destroy a culture, change the meaning of its words. Right. If yes. you look at all of the key words that are words about real human life, which is love, mm -hmm. they've all had their meaning changed. Yes, Love has true. become sexual athletics and something we do to somebody else. Forgiveness has become, I'm going to let you off the hook. Mm -hmm. And on and on and on goes the list. We actually do a, a four-hour video called Aramaicisms, uh, which is a term that I coined to represent our effort to reestablish the first century Aramaic meanings of words yes. so that we really can comprehend. The mind can only generate or construct accurate perception based on accurate words. Yes. And Lenin had it right. Destroy a culture, change the meaning of its words, because yes. culture 
or any tool, forgiveness or any other tool, is transferred in the human realm primarily through words. Through words, yes. If Absolutely. the words are misdefined, then all of a sudden it you means... just lost access to that tool. Yeah. So when yes. the Greeks redefine forgiveness as letting somebody off the hook, forgiving mm. them, forgiving myself, rather than collapsing my perception and accessing the root of my pain perception and yes. repairing it, then we end up with, you know, a, a vacancy. Yes. And any meaning whose words change, it just becomes unavailable. Yeah. The tool's gone. Right. Yeah, so true. My take is the reason why there is so much, and it's totally unnecessary, suffering and pain in the world mm -hmm. is because forgiveness was removed from the culture mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Just mm -hmm. about as soon as, you know, Yeshua left, in fact, I'm working on a book called The End of Suffering, and the opening of the book, um, you, you hear Yeshua's voice saying, you realize they, they killed me twice. First they killed my body, then they killed my teaching. Uh, and so to restore the actual original meaning of those words and the awareness of the tools and how they work becomes, has become my life's purpose. And as I say, specifically from the Aramaic perspective, I've been working on that for the last 40 or so years. Yes, that's amazing. And I truly did, had no idea about this. So I'm, I'm so grateful to be learning these. And, and I find that is one of the, the biggest challenges I find as a radical forgiveness coach is helping people to understand the true meaning of what it is and, and not what, you know, most people think it is. So I love that you've made it your life's work and that you take it right back to the origins of where it came from. And no wonder they wanted to get rid of forgiveness because that is really, you know, it's the solution to, it, it's the access for us to connect with the, our love part of us and release those constructs yep. that we build. <laughs> People in hostility and fear make great slaves. Kings want slaves. Yes. Get rid of anything that relieves people of their hostility and fear. Yes. Keep them in hostility or fear. They'll not experience themselves as the creative love that they are. Yes. yes. And as a result, we'll make great slaves for kings. And, right. you know, that's where the, the problem has begun. So I, wow. I think you're right when you said the word hidden. That was it. It's yeah. purposely been hidden away. Mm -hmm. And um, our purpose is to bring it forward and make it available. Because what, what happens is that this body-mind unit, when, one of the roots of my work is Einstein and and when we listen to Einstein and you know, with my science background, Einstein says this, on such things as matter, we have been all wrong. What we have heretofore called matter is energy, energy whose vibrations have been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. When you start looking from the perspective of matter doesn't exist, our I shows us and constructs the world of matter, but that's a construct of the mind. When we realize what's really there, it's all energy. And realizing that relative to your human form, there are only two qualities of energy. There's that which build it up. There's yes. that which tears it down. Right. When I put a form of tear down energy into this energy system, that is hostility or fear, wherever I store it, I literally initiate disease in that tissue. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, if you go back to the Aramaic language, the word that represents disintegrative energy is sin. Now, the mm -hmm. Greeks taught us sin, this big, terrible, awful, evil, nasty, wicked thing. <laughs> and we are supposed to buy that as our identity. Mm -hmm. And people who make the mistake of buying their identity as sinners mm -hmm. are lost in the insanity. Mm -hmm. recognizing that the word sin, it's actually an archery term in Aramaic. When I fired at the bullseye and I missed the bullseye, the scorekeeper yelled, sin, you're off the mark. Mm -hmm. so when I engage in hostility or fear and I put it into a form that's made to incarnate love, mm -hmm. I've committed quote unquote sin. I've put an energy in that doesn't belong. And I begin the deterioration of my structure. You know, the, mm. the, the Greek world just, you know, kind of massaged that whole conversation around backward. And, you know, they've told us that we need to be forgiven for our sins. Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever forgive you for your sins. You can't be forgiven for your sins. But you can remove the disintegrative energy. You can forgive the energy that's locked into tissue that's created disease, yes. disorder, 
and a mind that functions out of inaccurate perception. Mm -hmm. And now you've removed the sin. You've removed the energy that's off the mark. Uh -huh. If you never do that, if you never do that, if you stand around, you know, I'll have people who've said, well, you know, Michael, I don't really need to. My, my, the name of my book is Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And uh -huh. people can go to my website and download yes. it free. Awesome. Uh, and, and and I'll have people say, well, I hear you're doing this workshop. Why is this happening to me again? But And it's about forgiveness. But I don't really need to do it because I've already forgiven my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my kids, my parents, myself, my my former wife, my present wife. I've even forgiven my future wives. <laughs> and, and, and what I know from that conversation is this person today has done zero forgiveness work. Absolutely right. none. Yes, because it's we're all still talking of about forgiving them or ourselves, yes. we haven't addressed what's yes. going on inside. So yes. forgiveness is how I collapse the lies of my mind and drop into the hidden part of my mind, remove what didn't belong, and in so doing, I'm restored to my original creative nature, which is love. Yes, it makes perfect sense. Perfect. And many people will many people will say, well, now define love for me. Tell me what that is. There aren't enough words in any language to describe what love is. Mm. But there is an experiential definition that we've developed in the why is this happening to me again work. Mm -hmm. And that is, have you ever held a newborn baby? Have you ever held a newborn? Yes. Yeah. Of course. If you go back to the moment when you held that newborn. Mm -hmm. And you tapped into its essence. Mm -hmm. What word would you use to describe it? Mm, just pure. pure, pure innocence, love. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, just yeah. It, it's a, it, it's a question that my wife and I, Jeannie, have asked of tens of tens of thousands of people all over the globe, and one hundred percent of the time, the answer always comes back to some variation on the theme of love. That's an experiential definition. That's what we are. We are the essence of that newborn. And, and then I'll further ask, because, because this is another word that's been changed. We've been told love is a verb. It's something we're going to do to each other. I love you. You love me. Why don't you love me? You should love me. Excuse me. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to love you. Nobody has ever loved you. Nobody ever will love you. And you've never loved anybody, and you're never going to love anybody. <laughs> well, but wait a minute, Michael. Now you just confused the whole conversation. How are we ever going to live in relation? Well, Go back to holding the newborn child and answer this question. Is the newborn loving you or is the newborn love? Yes, it's just love. It's pretty clear the newborn is love. Yeah. That's our created essence. Mm -hmm. So love is a noun. It's not a verb. It's not mm -hmm. something we do to each other. Mm -hmm. And the world specializes in knocking the experience of our created essence love out of us by overlaying us with hostility and fear. And then sending us out to find somebody to love us. <laughs> and the kids had a song a few decades back, looking for love in all the wrong places, <laughs> looking for love in too many faces. Yes. And that's what people are doing. They're trying to recoup their created essence by getting it from someone else. And you can't get it from somebody else. Yeah. You can't give it to somebody else. But you can remove those overlays of hostility and fear mm -hmm. that block the awareness of yourself as love be restored to your essence. Now, every party that you go to, the worst, most destructive event on the planet, bring your essence, bring the presence of love to that party, and you now become a healer of whatever's going on in the world. Oh. Bring your hostility and fear and resentment about what's going on in the world, and you're a house divided against yourself, and you're adding energy to whatever right. it is you're fighting against. Wow, that's perfect. I am so about the rest of you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's actually, if you'd like, I've got a poem I'd love to share with you that I'm actually just getting ready to publish. I just completed Sure, it that would be a great way okay. to wrap it up. Yes, thank you so much. Cool. Okay. So it's called Love Mistaken, The Journey Home. Love. Ah, the world mind mistaken. Overtaken by thought disorders, especially the myth of fleeting love. Fears fraud. This error and excuse for irresponsibility and a loveless life must be healed. The truth is, our essence, love created, though relinquished, is eternal. Love. The grasp that, demanded of, and dreamed about is coming from another. 
will never be gained or possessed through him, her, or them. It can only, once again, be experienced by doing the work required to return to the luscious taste of the true self of being. Love. The essence of others can be touched, but not captured. It cannot be imprisoned to fulfill the dream of possession of love from another. It cannot fulfill the dream of what could never be. Love, self, confined in the cage of demand, distress endured, and held breath, fades. Forgotten in the swirling cries of a thousand generations of love mistaken, it disappears. Seized and bound by an unfulfilled yearning, it only appears to be smothered, dead. Foolish to think a surrogate can fulfill vanished self-awareness of what is buried beneath the noise of disordered thoughts, unforgiven suffering and pain. Love, not an action, but a state of being, the essence of the self, the only true experience of love. Relationship's purpose? To restore you to your birthright of living in love's ecstasy. All else is born of error and is generational self-delusion. Your deepest nature is to flourish in the bliss of being. No reason or possessions needed. Love was never absent. What seems lost, the still small voice of love, has but been obscured by perception, degraded by internally generated fear and or hostility. It is among us still, sleeping under the blanket of unfulfilled desires. It will live again, not in longing's fulfillment, but in release, in being out of your mind. The chains of desire bind, but goals loosed, soften into pure being that lives again in freed breath. For the truth is, I, love, live eternally, shiny and new, concealed but never touched by the trances and traumas of the world. I was birthed in awareness of self as love. When I truly forgive, I am freed from my mind and its lies. And, awakened to the truth of who I am, I rise again, love restored. As I live that love, my self in form, I fulfill the ancient call to reunite as I extend to all the world. Wow, very nice. I love that. So good. I feel like I need to have it in front of me to absorb it even more with the words. <laughs> Well, uh, we're actually just getting ready to uh, to send our newsletter. It's actually waiting for me to finish this oh, poem excellent. as we speak. And we're getting ready to send out a newsletter. So if you go to our website, yes. which is www.whyagain.org, mm -hmm. up in the top center, you'll see a link for our mailing list. If you put it on our mailing list, your name an email into our mailing list. We will send you the newsletter and it's going to be Excellent. right at the top of the newsletter. As soon as I get it finished, great. the newsletter is ready to go out with this in it. Okay. So you'll have it in writing. <laughs> awesome. That's great. I'll definitely do great. that. And thank you for saying that because now I now we have that um, for our, our listeners as well. Thank you so much for your time, Michael, um, for sharing Sweet. your wisdom and um, for taking the time to be with us and talking about um, this such an important topic and I am very grateful and I hope that uh, you are able to um, continue on and just also can you just mention your your radio show mind shifters radio right on blog talk oh, sure. radio yeah yeah and yeah. that can well, be two fun. things yeah sure two things that um, you know any time that we can be of support with what you're doing mm -hmm you're welcome to call me and I'd be delighted to, uh, to jump in and do a conversation Thank and you. help clarify support anytime, any amount of time needed. That's what the Thank whole you. purpose of my life is. Yeah. And two hours a day from noon till two o'clock, yes. we have a radio show that's Eastern time, noon yeah. till two, 
We have a two hour radio show five days a week and going on for eight years now to create support for people mm-hmm. who have difficulty, you know, keeping the understanding going in a culture that wants to push us in the opposite direction. It's called Mind Shifters Radio. Yeah. And the calling number for our show is 563 999 3581. It's an internet show. You can go to our website and access it from there. There's a microphone on the homepage. If you click that, it'll take you to listening to it. There's a chat room. And or most people just call into the show at that number, 563-999-3581. And if you call that number, you'll be listening to the show. And then if you have a question, you just push one through the magic technology it raises a hand and my wife Jeannie who's usually the one running the switchboard will know that you want to speak and we'll have a conversation if there's any question we can answer any support we can be that's what we're there for five days a week and we've got well over 2,000 of hours of conversations in our archives they're free and available on the website Thank you so much. That's so great. And I love that there's a resource that people can tap into anytime they need it because um, that's, that's big. People, you know, need to consistently be, um, you know, listening to these types of things to really get the essence of what the truth is of, around forgiveness and, and around what love is. And, and, um, and it's really, it truly is healing for us when we can continually um, keep bringing these types of um, teachings and, and conversations into our, our daily lives. So thank you so much for doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great well, day. Well, I'm honored and, and all right, blessings. Thank Take care. you. Bye-bye. Thank you.